Pursuant to the requirements of the Constitution of the State of Michigan, the representatives elect to the Michigan House of Representatives shall gather here in Representative Hall at the Capitol in Lansing on the second Wednesday of January at 12 o'clock noon. With that date and time having arrived, I hereby call the House to order. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this very special day. The invocation for today will be offered by Reverend Richard White III, pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. Will members, guests, and staff please rise for the invocation and remain standing after the invocation for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor White. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we come to you right now thanking you for allowing us to see this historic day. We thank you that you woke us up this morning, have given us health and strength, and have allowed us to assemble ourselves together. Lord, we ask as only you can that you would bless the Michigan House of Representatives. I ask that you would bless them as they work alongside our state senate, and our Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and our Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist II to create laws and establish our state's budget that will benefit all Michiganders and continue to make this a great state to live in. Father God, I ask that you would be with the Michigan House of Representatives and give them the wisdom and knowledge that they need as they work together to pass bills on public policy that will strengthen our state. Father God, I ask that you would bless all elected officials and their families Lord, protect them and their families from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, keep them in your care and continue to give them a spirit of collaboration that they may work together to continue to move our great state of Michigan forward. We ask all these blessings in your son's name we pray. Amen. It's my pleasure now to invite to the rostrum James E. White, Chief of Police for the City of Detroit. Chief White. Thank you. Good afternoon, and it is my absolute honor to be here. Please join me uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. The first order of business is communications from state officers. The clerk will read. To Clerk Gary Randall from Jocelyn Benson, Secretary of State. Dear Clerk Randall, I, Jocelyn Benson, Secretary of State and custodian of the Great Seal of the State of Michigan, certify that the persons named on the attached listing were duly elected at the November 8, 2022 general election to the Office of State Representative for a term commencing on January 1, 2023 and ending on January 1, 2025, as shown by the official return certified for the election and placed on file in this office. The message is referred to the clerk for record. Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll of the members of the House for this session of the legislature? Please answer as I call your name. District 1, Tyrone Carter. District 2, Tulio Liberati, Jr. District 3, Alibus Farhat. District 4, Karen Witsit. District 5, Natalie Price. Present. District 6, Regina Weiss. Present. District 7, Helena Scott. District 8, Mike McFall. Present. District 9, Abraham Ayash. Present. District 10, Joe Tate. Present. District 11, Veronica Pies. Present. District 12, Kimberly Edwards. Present. District 13, Lori Stone. Present. District 14, Donovan McKinney. Present. 
District 15, Aaron Burns. District 16, Stephanie A. Young. District 17, Lori Pahotsky. District 18, Jason Hoskins. Jason, District 19, Samantha Steklov. District 20, Noah Arbett. District 21, Kelly Breen. District 22, Matt Kolazar. District 23, Jason Morgan. District 24, Ranjiv Puri. District 25, Kevin Coleman. District 26, Dylan Wagala. District 27, Jamie Churches. District 28, Jamie Thompson. District 19, James DeSana. District 30, William Brook. District 31, Reggie Miller. District 32, Jimmy Wilson, Jr. District 33, Felicia Brabeck. District 34, Dale W. Zorn. District 35, Andrew Fink. District 36, Steve Cara. District 37, Brad Paquette. District 38, Joey Andrews. District 39, Pauline Wenzel. District 40, Christy Morse. District 41, Julie M. Rogers. Ju District 42, Matt Hall. District 43, Rochelle M. Smith. District 44, Jim Hodzma. District 45, Sarah Leitner. District 46, Kathy Schmaltz. District 47, Carrie Rangans. District 48, Jennifer Conlon. District 49, Ann Bolin. District 50, Robert J. Bazat. District 51, Matt Maddock. District 52, Mike Harris. District 53, Brenda Carter. District 54, Donnie Steele. District 55, Mark Tisdale. District 56, Sharon McDonald. District 57, Thomas E. Kuhn. District 58, Nate Shannon. District 59, Douglas C. Wozniak. District 60, Joseph Aragona. District 61, Denise Menser. District 62, Alicia St. Germain. District 63, Jay DeBoer. District 64, Andrew Beeler. District 65, Jamie Green. District 66, Josh Shriver. District 67, Phil Green. District 68, David W. Martin. District 69, Jasper Ryan Martis. District 70, Cynthia R. Neely. District 71, Brian Bagul. District 72, Mike Mueller. District 73, Julie Brixey. District 74, Cara Hope. District 75, Penelope Cernoglu. District 76, Angela Whitwer. District 77, Emily Devendorf. District 78, Gina Johnson. District 79, Angela Regas. District 80, Phil Skaggs. District 81, Rachel Hood. District 82, Kristen Grant. District 83, John Fitzgerald. District 84, Carol Glanville. District 85, Bradley Slaw. District 86, Nancy DeBoer. District 87, Will Snyder. District 88, Greg Van Workham. District 89, Luke Meerman. District 90, Brian Posthumus. District 91, Pat Outman. District 92, Jerry Nyer. District 93, Graham Filler. District 94, Amos O'Neill. District 95, Bill G. Schutte. District 96, Timothy Beeson. District 97, Matthew Burlein. District 98, Gregory L. Alexander. District 99, Mike Hoadley. District 100, Tom Coons. 
District 101, Joseph D. Fox. District 102, Kurt Vanderwall. District 103, Betsy Kofia. District 104, John R. Roth. District 105, Ken Borton. Districts 106, Cam Cavett. District 107, Neil W. Frisky. District 108, David Preston. District 109, Jen Hill. And last but certainly not least, District 110, Gregory Barkadin. Mr. Mr. Clerk, a quorum of the House is present. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The next business is the one you've all been waiting for, administration of the oath of office. And we're happy to welcome back to this chamber uh, a very distinguished member of the Michigan Supreme Court, the Honorable Kyra Harris Bolden, Justice of Michigan Supreme Court. Will you please rise, members? Justice Bolton, it is an honor. Thank you. For the oath of office, Representative Alex will stand at your desk, raise your right hand, and at the conclusion of the oath, respond, I do. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Michigan and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Representative according to the best of your ability? Congratulations. Each of you will find at your desk a folder with four oaths. Please sign those oaths now, and as soon as they're signed, please pass them to the center, and the sergeants will pick them up. So while that's happening, the House will stand at ease at the call of the chair.
The House will come to order. The chair recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayahash. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I move that you notify the Governor and the President of the Senate that a quorum of the House has been convened pursuant to the requirements of the Constitution and is ready to proceed with the business of this session. So ordered without objection. The next order of business is the election of the Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 102nd session of the legislature. Nominations are now open. The chair recognizes the Honorable Tyrone Carter. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Colleagues, honored guests, I'm honored to stand in front of the 102nd legislature and our guests to nominate Joe Tate for Speaker of the House. We've all had the pleasure to work al alongside Joe, but let me outline his lifetime of leadership. The Speaker-elect was born and raised in Detroit by a single mom who was a Detroit public school teacher because his father passed away in the line of duty as a Detroit firefighter. Joe attended Michigan State University and was elected captain of the MSU football team. After graduating from MSU, Joe moved on to the NFL. Then in one of the most important decisions of his life, Joe left a career in athletics and commissioned as an infantry officer in the United States Marine Corps. He deployed twice to Afghanistan as a platoon commander and then as a company executive officer where he oversaw the day-to-day -day operations of hundreds of Marines and sailors. When he returned home from the Marines, he completed his MBA and a Master's in Environmental Science from the University of Michigan. And now he's here. Getting ready to lead the House of Representatives after winning majority. Joe has been a friend, diligent House member, and here in the Capitol and across the state of Michigan. He has a history of doing work and bringing both parties together to get good policy done for the people of Michigan. He is a proven, strong leader, and is my honor, as his colleague, friend, and fellow Detroiter to nominate a leader who is focused on moving Michigan forward and the first black speaker of the House, Joe Tate. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Carter. Is there a second for the nomination? There is a second. The chair recognizes the minority leader, Representative Matt Hall. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The start of a new legislature marks an occasion to reflect on the accomplishments that have enabled the people of Michigan to flourish. It is also an opportunity to recommit ourselves to the people we serve and resolve to build an even stronger future for our state, to preserve and expand on our many successes. So I rise today to second the nomination of my friend and colleague from the 10th District, Joe Tate, for Speaker of the House. On numerous occasions since he and I took office four years ago, lawmakers of both parties have reached across the aisle and joined forces to benefit the people of the state of Michigan. In that time, we have boosted childcare to help working families. We have expanded educational opportunities to prepare Michiganders for high paying careers. We have supported law enforcement officers who keep our streets safe. We have also provided tax relief to Michigan families and small businesses. And our crowning bipartisan achievement was teaming up to revitalize the automotive industry in Michigan and bring transformative projects and the careers they create to our state. Our bipartisan record should set the tone for the next two years in the House of Representatives. To move our state forward, we must work together. We must continue to find common ground, a shared foundation upon which we can build a better future for the people of Michigan. Let's begin our partnership in the new year by making life more affordable for Michigan families. The people of our state especially need relief right now. Workers and seniors are all paying greater costs to provide for themselves and their families in this time of inflation. This year, we have a bipartisan opportunity to lift up the people of Michigan and offer tax relief so they can afford to feed, clothe, and transport their families. 
Let's continue strengthening Michigan's ability to compete in the national and international economy so we can attract new developments and jumpstart the high paying careers of the future right here. If we work together, the people of our state can soar to new heights. And let's keep forging stronger and safer communities. Our local police officers and sheriff deputies protect the people of Michigan and they need our ongoing support. In the next four years that our next speaker and I, in the four years that our <laughs> next speaker and I have served here, we have extended our state's upward trajectory, which launched 12 years ago when Michigan emerged from the despair of the lost decade, and we're just getting started. The people of Michigan sent every one of us, Republican and Democrat, here for a reason. In a closely divided legislature, the people of Michigan want us to closely work together on their behalf to govern in the middle. If we collaborate, if we focus on serving and helping those we represent, then we will have a successful two years because the people of our state will have a successful two years and an even brighter future in the years to come. With a commitment to the people of Michigan and a readiness to work together to reach our state's full potential, I proudly second the nomination of Joe Tate to serve this chamber and our great state as Speaker of the Michigan House of Representatives. Representative Joe Tate, has, the name has been placed in nomination and it has been seconded. I hear no further nominations. The nominations are closed. The House will proceed now to vote on the election of Joe Tate as Speaker of the House. A record roll call is required, and Clerk Brown makes me nervous when he's shaking his head no. Uh, <laughs> apparently a minor electronic glitch. Well, you know what, Clerk Brown? You just went through all 110 members. You might have a second opportunity. <laughs> Speaker Tate, this uh, just adds to the anxiety. <laughs> We'll get there, hold on.
Members, the board is now open. Please vote at your desk. Have all members voted? The clerk will close the board tally display and announce the vote. Mr. Clerk, on the question of electing Joe Tate as Speaker of the House, there are 102 aye votes and 8 nay votes. Joe Tate has been elected Speaker of the House. Speaker Tate, I can't think of a greater honor for my last act than to place in your hands the gavel. Congratulations. We might need a new board. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Clerk Randall, um, for everything that you've done in your service to this chamber and to this state. This is truly an honor and one of the proudest days of my life and career in service. Thank you to my colleagues for choosing me as Speaker of the Michigan House of representatives. I am grateful to have the opportunity to lead and serve this body, and I thank you for the support. A career in public service is made possible by the unwavering support of family and friends, and I want to ask the loved ones and guests present in the House chamber today to please rise and be recognized for your support and sacrifice. Thank you. I also want to thank those who are not in Lansing, but who may be watching from home and whose support is critical to our success. And finally, I want to take a moment to recognize and remember those who are no longer with us, but whose support throughout all of our lives has left an indelible mark on our hearts and helped make this moment possible for all of us. Our commitment to public service is the invisible thread that connects us all and motivates us to seek office. Each of us spent months campaigning and earning votes in the culmination of victory on election night. Running for office is a demanding task, but the real work begins today with the start of the 102nd session of the Michigan Legislature. Since the very first session of the legislature meeting in the territorial capital of Detroit in 1835 to today's official start, the people of our great state have seen fit to place their trust 
and elected representatives meant to serve their best interests and advance their priorities. The responsibility of service is a weighty but rewarding duty. It requires determination, persistence, teamwork, commitment, and humility. These are underrated virtues, and while they might not be the tools that elevate an individual, they can raise up an institution. Our directive is simple. Make government work for the people. Partisan bickering and political stalemates erode people's faith in government and can consume us. Michiganders have placed their trust in us and we are obligated to overcome our differences in order to earn their confidence and make ourselves worthy of their vote. We were elected to reach consensus and advance policies that address the real problems facing our residents. We have a choice. We can be agents for change, or we can be obstacles to progress. I, for one, am committed to change, and I'm looking for any and all willing partners to join me in moving Michigan forward. Michigan families are struggling. Our job is to recognize their struggles, acknowledge their hardships, and support meaningful change that increases their financial security and stability. Our state cannot stand strong if our families feel weak. The people of Michigan are its greatest natural resource. Policies that value and support workers strengthen our economy. We all want to see economic investment and opportunity grow in our state, and there is much we can do to encourage development that benefits the bottom line and workers alike. Our residents want to know that they are protected and that they are valued. We will make good on the promises to expand fundamental protections under the law to all Michiganders and do away with antiquated public acts that prevent people from having agency over their lives and their bodies. Michigan cannot thrive under the weight of archaic laws. Communities that need our support and resources. We will lift up opportunities for economic development and investment to help ensure our cities, towns, and villages have the resources necessary to keep their streets safe and their neighborhoods strong. Every Michigander deserves to live in a thriving community. And while the needs of each are unique, the desire to prosper is universal. Our children need our commitment as well. We must pass common sense laws to help keep kids safe in school and to support their overall well-being. We must also commit to ensuring all students have access to a world-class education. Education is not only the key to personal success of our residents, but also essential to the overall health of our democracy. Michigan was once a leader in public education, and we want to see the status restored through robust support for teachers and increased funding for classrooms so that all students become successful adults and informed citizens. History will judge our actions over the course of the next two years. It is our duty to be truth tellers. Misinformation and falsehoods can be the undoing of our institutions and our reliable systems of government. It is paramount that we guard this institution and leave the house better than we found it. I extend my willing hand in partnership as a colleague and a friend. 
Ours is a unique privilege. Millions of people have called Michigan home for over, many, over the many decades of its statehood. But it's only a small portion of us who have the privilege to serve as its elected representatives. I hold this honor in high esteem, and I know you do the same. Today, as, as we have taken our oath of office, we are full of pride and good intentions, fueled by the trust that has been placed in us and by our constituents. We should hold on to that feeling of today and bring them with us for each subsequent session day. Our commonalities are greater than our differences, and the people of Michigan, they're counting on us to get the job done. Thank you, and let's now get to work. The speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Boy, does that sound good. <laughs> I move to suspend the rules so that all remarks of the preceding speakers may be printed in the journal. So order without objection. The speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you again, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House proceed to the order of motions and resolutions and take up House Resolution Number 1. So order without objection. The clerk will read. Speaker, Representatives Ayash and Posthumus offer House Resolution Number 1, a resolution prescribing the standing rules of the House of Representatives. The question before the House is on the adoption of House Resolution Number 1. All those in favor of the resolution will say aye. Aye. All those opposed will say nay. The resolution is adopted. The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Mr. Speaker, continuing under the order of motions and resolutions, I move that the House proceed to take up House Resolution Number 2. The clerk will read. Representative Ayash and Posthumus offer House Resolution Number 2, a resolution provide for Lori Pahutsky to be Speaker Pro Tem of the House of Representatives for the 102nd Legislature. The question is on the adoption of House Resolution Number 2. The Constitution requires a record roll call vote. All those in favor of the resolution will vote aye. The clerk will open the board. Members may vote at their desk. You may still vote at your desk. Okay. The speaker recognizes minority floor leader posthumous. Mr. Speaker, I move to excuse Representative Andrew Beeler. So ordered. The clerk will close the board, tally display, and announce the vote. 
Mr. Speaker, on the question of adoption of House Resolution Number 2, there are 100 aye votes and 9 nay votes. A majority of the members present and voting have voted in favor of House Resolution Number 2 is adopted. The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Continuing under the order of motions and resolutions, I move that the House proceed to take up House Resolution Number 3. The Clerk will read. Representatives Ayash and Posthumus offer House Resolution Number 3, a resolution to provide for the election of Richard J. Brown as Clerk of the House of Representatives for the 102nd Legislature. The question is on the adoption of House Resolution Number 3. The Constitution requires a record roll call vote. All those in favor of the resolution will vote aye. The clerk will open the board. You may still vote at your desk. The clerk will close the board, tally display, and announce the vote. Mr. Speaker, on the question of adoption of House Resolution Number 3, there are 105 aye votes and 4 nay votes. The majority of the members present and voting have voted in favor of House Resolution 3, and it is adopted. <laughs> Mr. Brown, will you please join me on the rostrum? for the purpose of taking and subscribing to the oath of office for the clerk of the House of Representatives. Sir, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Michigan and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of clerk of the Michigan House of Representatives according to the best of your ability? I do. Congratulations. <laughs> The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the Clerk notify the Governor and the President of the Senate of the elections of Speaker of the House, Representative Joe Tate, and Clerk of the House, Richard J. Brown. So order, without objection. The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Continuing under the orders, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Continuing under the orders of motions and resolutions, I move that the House proceed to take on House Resolution Number 4. The clerk will read. Mr. Speaker, Representatives Ayash and Posthumus offer House Resolution Number 4, a resolution fixing the hour for daily sessions. The question is on the adoption of House Resolution Number 4. All those in favor of the resolution will say aye. Those opposed will say nay. Aye. The resolution is adopted. The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Continuing under the order of motions and resolutions, I move that the House proceed to take up House Resolution Number 5. The Clerk will read. Mr. Speaker, Representative Ayash and Posthumous offer House Resolution Number 5, a resolution directing the Clerk to notify the Governor that the House is assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the session. The question is on the adoption of House Resolution Number 5. All those in favor of the resolution will say aye. 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 Those opposed will say nay. The resolution is adopted. The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Continuing under the order of motions and resolutions, I move that the House proceed to take up House Resolution Number 6. The Clerk will read. Mr. Speaker, Representative Ayash and Posthumous offer House Resolution Number 6, a resolution directing the Clerk to notify the Senate that the House is assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the session. The question is on the adoption of House Resolution Number 6. All those in favor of the resolution will say aye. aye. Those opposed will say nay. The resolution is adopted. <laughs> Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the House proceed to the order of messages from the Senate. The House will proceed to the order of messages from the Senate. The clerk will read.
Two Speaker Joe Tate from Daniel Oberlin, Secretary of the Senate. Dear Mr. Speaker, by direction of the Senate, I hereby notify you that a quorum of the Senate is assembled and is ready to proceed with the business of the session. Refer to the clerk. The speaker recognizes Majority, majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you. The House will go at ease. Ladies and gentlemen, just so you understand what we're waiting on right now, we're waiting on the Senate to return over two resolutions that we need to read, it, read into the record. They should be here shortly, so please stay in place. Thank you.
House will come to order. The speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Continuing under the order of messages from the Senate, I move the House proceed to Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1. Without objection, so ordered. The clerk will read. To the Speaker of the House of Representatives, sir, I herewith transmit to the House of Representatives Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1, a concurrent resolution granting authority for adjournment for more than two days. The question is on the adoption of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 1. All those in favor of the resolution will say aye. aye. Those opposed will say nay. The concurrent resolution is adopted. The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Continuing under the order of messages from the Senate, I move the House proceed to Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 2. Without objection, so ordered. The Clerk will read. To the Speaker of the House of Representatives, sir, I hereby transmit to the House Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 2, a concurrent resolution for the adoption of the joint rules of the Senate and House of Representatives. The Senate has adopted the concurrent resolution. The question is on the adoption of Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 2. All those in favor of the concurrent resolution will say aye. Those opposed will say nay. The concurrent resolution is adopted. The Speaker recognizes Majority Floor Leader Ayash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just to let the members and guests know, there will be no further voting. And when the House adjourns today, it stands adjourned until Thursday, January 12th at 12 o'clock noon. So ordered without objection, the House will stand at ease.